Hi, it's Megan. So I am going to do a suggestion video, a video that was suggested to me by someone who regularly watches other videos that I do. So what I'm going to do a video on right now is the Lorac Pro 2 palette. And I'm going to overlay outdoor swatches so you can see the color is in the palette in natural light. And I like to do that just because I feel like indoor light always skews it slightly, I don't know, yellow a lot of times, but it just depends on the indoor light. So that way you can see it out in the sunshine. And especially with the shimmery shades, I just think they look different. So this is it. It's a gray palette as compared to the original black. It like, looks like this, and it has a mirror up top, which I'm not going to show on camera. And so this is $42.00 for 16 shadows that are 0.02 ounces. And then you get a mini eyeshadow primer, rock eyeshadow primer, which is 0.19 ounces. And I mostly use these colors with eyeshadow primers. They mostly blend really beautifully. They're creamy, they're super pigmented, they apply evenly, they wear evenly. It's, I'm a huge Lorac fan anyway, but I just think this palette quality wise is great. Having said that, a couple of the matte shadows are not perfect, not pristine, and then I've also found just adding a primer makes the eyeshadows wear so much better. They look better, they apply, I think it's harder to apply them because the eyeshadows stick a little bit, but they just look so much better, they're worth it. So the Lorac primer, to me, there's like different gradations of how much pigment you want from your shadows. There's like the lower pigment, which still lasts great, they just aren't quite as like sucking in all the color. And I would say the Lorac primer falls there. Then there's like the Urban Decay, which every little bit of color just like sticks on your lid. And then there's something like a white pencil, like an NYX Milk pencil, which you're gonna see so much color. But I found that with the primer, they lasted better. And most of the shades, that wasn't a big deal, but there were a couple where it made a difference. So, what did I think? I think overall, and I'm going to do, this is what I think overall, because I'm going to go through them one by one also, and compare the palettes to the Pro 1, but I'll give you an overall, then go through the one by one shadow. So overall, I really liked the mix of shades. I think it's a little bit darker and smokier than the original Pro, so I actually like this better because I find it more interesting. I have a lot of really nude, neutral palettes, but I think most people are going to disagree with me on that. So I'll say I like the interesting shades, but not everybody is going to go for that more smoky, colorful. A lot of people are going to prefer the more neutral pro one. But I thought the quality was comparable. Uh, also, there were a lot of medium shades, dark shades, and some of the shimmery shades were maybe a little metallic for me. So the palette as a whole leaned warm. And I'm warm to neutral undertone and all that. So I can wear that perfectly. I can wear warm and cool shades. But with kind of the darker leaning and the metallic stuff. First, metallic makes things a little cooler on me with my skin tone. And with the darker like playing around with it, but I had to be careful. There's a lot of, it's almost like you'd want to work in some lighter shades into this palette. So first let's compare it to the Pro palette and then I'm going to go shade by shade. So this is my Pro palette. It's got eyeshadow on it. So black versus gray. Then you open it up. So same size. It's basically the same concept, it's just different colors. Let's hold it up without dropping it. I nicked one of my shades earlier. So you can see the original Pro is just a much more neutral brown based uh, palette. This one has just more of a range of, of colors. A lot more kind of color and smoky. And then also I would say that they have the same concept with the mattes on the top row and the shimmery metallic ones on the bottom row. And since I'm a huge matte fan, and I, I, I subscribe to the belief that it's best to mix the mattes with the uh, 
shimmers. So I like that balance. Okay, let's go through them one by one. Oh, as far as the original shades duping, the black is in both, and then some bloggers have said the taupe is similar to light brown. I thought that the light brown in this one was a little bit warmer tone than to the taupe in the other. So, first box. I'm going to do the row here first, and then I'm going to row there. And there's a mirror, like I said, but I'm not showing it. I still have my little rack sticker on it. Okay, so buff. This is a very creamy... So the first eight are going to be mattes. This is a matte. It's a very creamy yellow tone beige. And applies evenly. All of these shadows are lasting seven or eight hours without a primer, or almost all of them. They last a good 10 plus with a primer. So it's a light shade. It almost has a peach undertone to it as well. Very pretty. I have that right under my eyebrow as a highlight. The next one is the light brown, and this is a medium brown. It's warm. It's almost got a taupe undertone, but not really. It's really just a light fawn brown. Very even to apply, creamy, great shade for most people. I really like this type of shade on lids for just like a day natural kind of light neutral look. I almost did this look for the video with that, but then I decided to go with kind of more unusual shades. The next one is the gray, and I almost, it's a cool gray is the title. This is definitely cool, and it's gray, but it's more taupe, almost with a slight little hint of purple in my opinion. Taupey with a little bit of purple, a little bit of gray. I don't know, where does gray become purple, right? There's that misty kind of look. Again, just an even shade, applies beautifully, creamy. I found it with some of the darker mattes that I had a problem with, not the lighter ones. The lighter ones are perfect. The next one is not applying evenly because my wrist is still wet. wet. This is Nectar, and this is a muted peach. It's almost a, a very orangey peach, but definitely peach because you can see the little bit of pink. And it's kind of light medium. Again, it's matte, and this one on me applied beautifully. I'm going to leave it on my wrist because I wanted to show it next to the next two shades. Next comes a plum, and then a navy. So there's the plum and the navy. And the plum is a plum purple. It's a little bit warmer tone than some purples, but purples still lean a little cool on me. And... This one is a little bit more dry than some of the others, but it still applies beautifully. This color I love, this is navy. It's a kind of a navy indigo. And by indigo, it's like such a rich, deep, beautiful color. I just love this color. And I have this as a liner. And because it is so pigmented, I really had to blend it out a little bit. But I love this shade. And then I put just a tiny bit in the crease. And I, I actually had to shoot this video twice the second time of shooting it because... This was so pigmented. I could still see the lines of the navy on my eyelids because I didn't blend it enough. It's just a beautiful shade, but it's so rich. You have to be careful with it. And I mean that as a compliment. I really love this shade. It's such a stunning color. I don't know. Do you, do you understand what indigo means? Like a deep, rich navy, but not just navy, like deeper than that. The next one is charcoal. And this again is a matte. And this is a medium dark gray. Again, it's a little bit warmer than a lot of grays. I love this kind of color. This is a great smoky, put it on the lids kind of thing. Um, either dark or light, depending how smoky you want it to be. But this and the next one, black, are not the most pigmented of their genre. So I don't mind blacks. This is a matte black. Um, but I would say it's medium to dark. This is not like your inky, dark, super black black. I prefer colors that are a little bit more muted than this. They still blend beautifully. They're amazing quality overall. You know, when I'm starting to talk about this, it's not quite as pigmented, it's not quite as buttery, it's not quite as even. We're talking small differences. This is a great quality palette. But this is definitely not the blackest black you're going to find out in the market. The next line. So the first one is Snow. And I actually use this as a highlight a lot. I, I use this with... I have this green shade on, which I'll get to eventually, which is like my favorite shade, that and the indigo in the whole palette. I use this white up here as well, and then I put a little bit in the inner corner of my eyes today. So this is it, and this is a white, and it's all of the 
shimmery shades to me are frosted almost to the metallic point like I said and this one definitely gets there I see undertones in this I can see a little bit of blue I can see a little bit of pink but it's very faint so to me this is kind of I would say neutral toned the next one is beige and that's not showing up because of where I put it and this to me is a very light peachy beige and it's definitely warm, but because it's so metallic, because it's warm because of the peach undertone, but it's a little metallic on me, so it can lean a little bit warmer depending on the angle. I don't know if that makes sense. Kind of a warm color with the metallic on me just leans a little cooler than it normally would. The next one is rose. I love this color. This is so pretty. So I'm going to put this next to the next one. So we've got rose and mocha, and these two work beautifully together. Rose is a metallic copper but it's almost like a rose gold copper if that makes sense and uh, it's got a little bit of a warm undertone to it but again it's super metallic and same with this warm undertone but super metallic and this is mocha it's a dark brown and it's got kind of a reddish undertone I'm super into these reddish browns right now so I really love this it's not exactly if I were to it's almost a bronzy copper more bronze than copper, but because it's like a red undertone, it's kind of an unusual undertone. Next, we have chrome. This is another fun shade. This is a little bit cooler than some of the others. And this is kind of a medium taupe, and I can see like little bits of purple, I can see little bits of blue, little bits of pink as I move around, but it's not like a super duochrome. It's just a little subtle finish. And this leans a little cool on me. The next one is silver. Uh, I'm actually going to put chrome back. I just took it off. These are really pretty together. So the silver, it's a little bit of a metallic silver. And again, I see little bits of blue and purple mixed into it. A little bit, it's a pretty color, but these two together are really pretty. And then, Jade. This is my favorite color in the whole palette. I've been wearing this. Every time I reach for this palette, I reach for this color. And then I have to remind myself to wear other colors, but I love this. This is Jade. It's super dark. It's like a safari khaki green. And it's definitely got warm olive undertones. It's got that metallic satin. This one's less metallic, so it's more satin than metallic. And I put this on my lid. And every time I put this on, I look at it and I'm like, oh my god, that's so dark. Why did I put such a dark color on my lid? But then I can really kind of fade it out a little bit. And that was the problem with the first video I did with these colors, is that I just hadn't blended them enough. So it's a beautiful, beautiful color. You can use it as a liner, you can use it in the crease, which I got the blue in the crease and underneath, but you can also thin it out and just put it on the lids. I love this color, and I gravitate toward this type of color. I have different variations, and I have found that finding one that's this opaque and pigmented and dark is actually quite rare for me. If anyone has any other suggestions, I'd love to hear it, but um, I really love this color. And the last one, and that was the other thing I'd say about these. These are super pigmented. Like you see these colors, that's why they're so dark. They're so pigmented that even if they don't look like they're going to apply super dark, they actually like often apply darker than they look they will. Like they look they will. Like they will. This is cocoa. This is the last one. This is another one of my favorite shades. It's a medium dark red brown. And it's almost like it has a soft shimmer over a more matte, opaque finish and I again see kind of this is actually just a really rich brown if I were to put an undertone it's almost like a reddish purple to it uh, it's a really unusual color too so I really like it um, this one is beautiful as a liner and again it's a crease it's too dark for me to wear on my lid so overall what do I like about this palette first of all I think the quality of the shadows is like Lorac shadows in general amazing these are super super pigmented opaque they apply beautifully I can nitpick over one versus the other because some are better than the others but overall the quality is just amazing I like the shades I will say again that I like this better than the original pro but I'm the exception most people will prefer a more neutral palette I like the smokiness of this I like the unusual colors I think given that the first palette was so neutral ish kind of adding in some still somewhat neutral but just unusual colors was a smart move on the rack's part 
and it just makes it more interesting. Like we've got enough, we've all got enough browns probably at this point. Um, I like the wear time, they wear beautifully, they wear evenly. And I just think it's a fun palette. I'm thinking about doing some videos with just different looks. So if people would like to see that, let me know. And I will do that. Kind of a natural look, a smoky look, a blue, you know, different, all that kind of fun stuff. And I think that's it. Please subscribe on YouTube. And then I've put a novel on YouTube called Masks, which is about makeup and the masks we wear. And I just finally put my sixth chapter up. So I'll put a link to those chapters in the description. And thanks very much. And thanks for the person who suggested this palette. I never like to say who it was because some people may not like that, but anyway, if you ever suggest something and don't mind me saying who suggested it, let me know. Thanks. <laughs>